Hey guys, I am your Pro Jazz Reaver. Today we're going to take an in-depth dive on my do-it-yourself algae scrubber that I have on my 75 bar tank. I'm going to show you how I built it, the tools I used to build it, and stay tuned till the end. And I'm going to show you how I lowered the temperature three degrees in that tank from 81 to 78, where it should be. As you know, everything I do here is DIY. I build it myself as I can afford it. It's broke. As you can tell, I have to, I don't even have my own whiteboard. I have to borrow the granddaughters. Just saying. All right, let's get into this algae scrubber. And again, stay tuned until the end, and I'll show you how I turned it into a water chiller as well. All right, we're here behind the 75 mixed reef. Uh, built-in bar tank. This is my sump. Our water flow is left to right. This is the algae scrubber. All right. Now we're going to build this. We're going to start with some quarter-inch uh, white plastic sheeting from your local home store. You're going to cut yourself a box, whatever size you need to fit your tank. And you want it to be about four inches taller. And you'll see why in just a minute. And then we're going to put holes in it. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute too. How we build our box, you just use a scale saw. I'm a carpenter, so I use a table saw. You cut your four sides, and then I cut myself some three-quarter inch strips, and I lay those in with PVC glue. You can see the purple primer, but we don't care about that. And we stick those in for reinforcement, then we attach our sides, this being the box, of course and our lid. Before we put our lid on top, before we separate it and make this cut, we're going to go and take a keyhole saw and we're going to drill our holes on all four sides. One, two, three, four. That's so I can put my pump on either side. You could just do one side if you're set with where you're going. I've actually changed mine since I originally built it. And then draw yourself a square line cut it again with your skill saw. Now you've got your lid. Your bottom is open-ended. Don't put anything on the bottom. It's not necessary. As you can see, this whole thing will just lift out if I want to. But I've got rocks and chato down there on the bottom. I don't want to lift it out for this demonstration. Then you're going to get yourself some quarter-inch piping. You're going to need a T, two end caps, a 90-degree and this one just screws on. It's a little adapter going to my quarter-inch pipe. Uh-oh, which way do I want to go? Eh, this way, I believe. All right, so we're going to cut the length we need to come up to our little side hole here because this is going to sit right in here. And then you'll notice this is glued. This is not. This is my broke-ass disconnect. I just pull it out, it's inside the sump, it doesn't matter if it leaks, and it, this one doesn't, so we've been lucky. When you've made your T, you want to take a quarter inch drill, drill some holes in the bottom of the T, and your skill saw, and cut a groove in here. Next step, you're going to need some plastic mesh, one of the wise kitchen knives. You want to rough this up really good, so it's all furred up, it gives the algae something to grab to. You're going to take a pair of scissors. You're going to cut it with these little tabs on each side that will fit into your grooves. Notice it dripping on the pond liner, and I don't care. Pond liner is great. Also, with your knife, you're going to poke a little hole on each side. You're going to take yourself some zip ties, stick them through the hole like so, and every once in a while, if you want to scrape some algae off or you want to change it, same process. Yep. And then you take those little slots, you stick them right up in there. And zip tie that sucker on. There's one. And then we get the other. Just like so. And 
why you want to get it up in these slots is check it out. Here you can see how inserting the screen up into the pipe gives it a nice smooth flow of water down over the algae. I've got my tuned submersible light there, some macro algae, some chato, and some live rock down in the bottom just for a little added filtration. Alright, we've got that attached. Set of side cutters, some climbs, some dikes, anything with thick, just trim these off. Even your scissors will do, just a little tougher. Oop, don't want that in the sump. Alright, I'm working with a 200 gallon per hour pump, a little cheapy off of Amazon. And then we take this, we just drop it in here, into our sump. Progos disconnect. You see how the two sides hold your inch and a quarter caps very nicely here. This is a two and an eighth keyhole bit. And then put this sucker on here. Do I have okay? I put it on backwards. Again, this is why we like to disconnect. Let's take it out. Twist it around the other way. Like so. Back on. And it sits right in there. And you have a handy dandy lid. Again, I did mine both sides. I actually started out with my pump on this side and decided to put it on this side with my return. And, as I promised, I turned this into a chiller. Check this out. Well, quick before that, on both sides of this box, I can tell you, water's not going to flow through. You don't put some damn holes in it. Both sides. Into your, my bubble trap and out. Very important, same quarter inch pit. Just drill a bunch of holes, make sure you got plenty of water flow from one side to the other. Very important. All right. How I turn this into a chiller is... <laughs> what did I do with it? It's around here somewhere. Mount a fan. Got two screws mounted up here. I set this in like that. Plug her in. And now that blows over the screen. It gets evaporative cooling. It took my tape temperature down from 81 to 78 is all I know. But the heater does come on, so I know it will probably chill it even cooler if I let it go. However, little tip. That will evaporate your water a little faster, so if you either have an uh, automatic water top off, which someday I hope to afford and get incorporated into this, um, that's great. Or you do like me and you keep a five gallon jug of RODI water on hand and you just top it off every day when you get home from work. So that's how the Broadcast Reaver does it.